Well, my friends, it is that time. It is Monday and it's time for Monday Manor. It's time for M&M. And I trust you are ready to receive and to be um, uh, positioned for more. Hey, love you, my brother. Good to see you here. All right. So we're going to uh, linger a little bit just so that others will join us today on our Monday Manor broadcast. And we have in the last several weeks been focusing on purpose and purpose is that thing that specific thing that you came from heaven to earth to do you existed before you came to earth you existed in the heart of god in the mind of god and so you came from that dimension to the earth realm to fulfill a kingdom assignment to fulfill god's agenda and if you and I get a hold of what that is, we would live our lives purposefully, we would live our lives productively, we would live our lives passionately. And that is my goal today, to help us, right? So invite someone, good to see you here, wow. Have some friends online with me today. Please invite someone to watch along with you as we talk about living life on purpose and today we want to talk about being an original all right get somebody get someone to join with you today so <laughs> I, I i was excited that the weather is getting cooler here in florida and i decided okay i'll go outside today but it's not as cool as i thought so i'm needing to stay hydrated and all that stuff wonderful but Father, we just thank you for a lovely day, a beautiful day. Thank you that it's another opportunity to live out our God-given purpose, to, to, to connect with heaven and bring God's purpose to the earth. Father, we ask that however you choose to use us, wherever you choose to position us, that Father, we would do so with everything within us. Thank you for those who are watching. Thank you for those who will watch. And we glorify you even in this moment, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, let me know you're here. Thumbs up, heart, whatever. Uh, respond, react, engage, okay? And invite someone to watch with you. It was John Mason who said these words. You were born an original. Don't die a copy. Let me try that again. You were born an original don't die a copy so every one of us were born as a unique um limited edition nobody else oh my god when god created you he broke the mold there's no carbon copy of you there is no imitation of you right however the truth be told so many live their lives because somebody else says this is what you should do somebody else did something and how we live out our lives uh become informed by what happened to us or by what was said to us help me here lord jesus so i want to help us today that to be you to be your original self you've got to go back to your creator there is no working out of you. There is no living out you. There is no manifestation of the real you, except you go back to the one who shaped you, formed you. They, uh, the psalmist said in one, Psalm 139, I was fearfully, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It is the truth. You are, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God makes no mistake. He doesn't make junk. He doesn't make anything that needs to be discarded right so what in the world has happened that many of us are not living out our purpose not maximizing our purpose not ascending to the very heights of how god intended us to live well the sin factor the sin factor is 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 what has become the barricade so to speak has become the blockage to go in to our destiny to go into the fullness of our destiny and it began in our mother's womb david said in psalm 51 
I was conceived in sin. In sin was I conceived and formed. My God, I mean, I, I mean, when you think about it, it's only through Jesus Christ that we're going to get this right, right? Because from conception to birth, through all the stages of life, we have been marred. And so outside of a restoration into the Imago Dei, which is the image of God, we will be forever struggling to figure out how to really live on purpose. Living on purpose requires that we go back to the original plan that God had in mind. Good God Almighty. I am using a phone to record this broadcast. A phone was designed to do some specific things. Now, long ago, a phone was just to make calls and receive calls. My goodness. But now, a cell phone, <laughs> you can bank with your cell phone, you can video with your cell phone, you can email with your cell phone, you can play games with your cell phone, you can monitor your your alarm system and your 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 um your camera, your, your security camera with your cell phone. You can do all kinds of things with your cell phone all kinds of good things. But do you know that there are people who have used the same cell phone to do evil as well, right? So it depends on whose hand and whose mind will engage with this thing that it can be a good thing or a dangerous thing. But the phone was not designed to be a steering wheel. The phone was not designed to be a doormat. It wasn't designed to do to do certain things. Don't use it as a hammer to get the nail in the board. It's not designed for that purpose. You see, your design informs your purpose. Woo, you better write that down. Your design, my design, informs my purpose. So if you want to know what you're supposed to be doing. If you want to be that original person God created you to be, look at your design. Look at your design. Look at how you're wired. Look at what makes you think and you get energized. Look at what stirs you. Look at what comes sometimes makes you angry even. Look at what makes you sad, makes you happy, makes you excited. What motivates you, what drives you. Look at those things that stirs your internal being. And that is a tip of a cue or to what you're supposed to be doing. Can I just tell you, I was thinking about today and I was reflecting last night how as a little girl, I must have been six, seven, whatever. You know, we all, every child does um, imitation or um, imagination play, I should say. Im imagination play. Every child, I think. We all imagine that we were this and we were that, right? So I would have the brooms that we had at home I remember those brooms that they made from the straw and they had the long stick. You remember that, my brother? And we had maybe more than one of those brooms. And I would bring out the brooms and I would be the teacher. I was going to teach these brooms. They were going to spell. <laughs> they were going to repeat what I said. And by the way, I was whipping those brooms if they did not respond like I wanted them to. Oh God, help me, Jesus. <laughs> I was wired a long time to be who I am and how I am. Trust me. So the fact that I am a teacher, I taught elementary school, but I'm a teacher of the word is no surprise because from childhood, I was imagining myself in a classroom and I was the teacher. What design have you observed about yourself? Do you connect well with people? Do you empathize deeply with people's pain? Do you like to fix things? Do you like to th see things in order? Do you like to see things flow systematically? Do you like to 
create things with your hands. There's some people, listen, don't put them in a classroom. I had one uh, a son in the house who, he said, don't give me a book. Don't give me a book to read. I'm never going to finish that book. But you give him something to do with his hand. Oh my goodness. He was blessed. He was, he, no, well, he is blessed because he's still here. Thank God. He's able to do a lot because God wired him as a person to create with his hand. He couldn't do what some of us do to sit in a classroom and get degrees, uh, but he could do much more because he stayed within the context of his design. How has God designed you? Be an original. Now, the truth be told, the fabrication and the imitation and the distortion of what we put out there came from some place. At some point, somebody told you that you were not good enough. Somebody told you you were stupid. Somebody told you you were dumb. T somebody told you you were not a college material or you're not whatever material, you're not a managerial um, material. Whatever somebody said might have lodged somewhere in your soul Mm -hmm. It was a seed that was planted. And now, instead of being that original person, you are living in the shadows of what was spoken over your life. Instead of being that original dynamic person God designed you to be, you're living as, as an insecure, uncertain imitation, fabrication, distortion of the version of who God said you are. Listen, the sin factor has done more damage than many of us realize or are aware, aware of. I don't know about you, but I want to attain to the fullness of my destiny. I don't know about you, but I want to maximize the reason I came on earth. I want to write all the books I'm supposed to write. I want to preach all the sermons I'm supposed to preach. I want to counsel all the people I'm supposed to counsel. I want to pray for every person I am supposed to pray for. Now, I'm not going to pray for the 7 billion plus people on planet Earth in, in a personal way, in a direct manner. But there are some people that God has designed me to minister to. There is a place or places where God would want me to minister. Come on, somebody. And there is a design that I have, a purposeful design to fit the assignment. You are designed to fit the assignment. There's everything about me, my personality, my God, my makeup. You bet. If you meet me in person, if you haven't done so yet, how I am now is how I am. <laughs> I am animated. I, 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 I am alive. I am not pretentious. I am not trying to be anything else. I am just me. So I am going to, I'm going to present back to God what he put inside of me. Because if you try to be anything else, like David in first Samuel 17, you will struggle in Saul's armor. Wow. Wow. Are you struggling in Saul's armor? Are you struggling in something or in some place that just does not fit your design? Woo! Like a square peg in a round hole. Can I just tell you the joy of living is in purpose. It's connected to purpose. David said to Saul, I can't go fight Goliath in this. I, I have never, I've never worn an armor. I'm not familiar with this armor. It is, it is cumbersome. <laughs> it is, it is, it is heavy. It is, it is beyond my weight uh, capacity. I, I don't know how to move. I'm not going to be able to maneuver in this armor. David took off Saul's armor. You're going to have to take off whatever was put on you. I am going to have to take off 
whatever somebody put on me. Lord Jesus, somebody get that. You're going to have to strip down today if you're going to get into your purpose. Because something that was done or something that was said has been wearing on you, has been on you, clinging to you, stifling and causing you to stagger and to struggle to move forward. Your stagnation is connected to something that you're wearing that you must now cast off. Ooh, I told you how it's hot and steamy here. Oh my goodness. Listen, get rid of what you have been carrying. <laughs> Decide no longer to carry the shame of the abortion. Decide no longer to carry the shame of the sexual molestation. Decide no longer to carry the shame of the affair. Decide no longer to carry the shame of the rejection, the shame of whatever you have done or whatever was put on you. Whatever was spoken to your spirit that has caused you to see yourself in a distorted manner that has fabricated your view of yourself. Oh my God. And now you're putting out an imitation of who God says you are. Today, I say to you, you walk in Saul's armor no more. You lay it aside. And yes, pick up your slingshot. Yes, pick up that stone which looks insignificant, but because it is what you were wired to use, because it what you it is what you were trained to use, you will do great exploits with the anointing of God and the grace of God with the little slingshot and the little stone in your hand. Listen, don't despise what you carry. Don't compete and don't compare yourself with anybody else. You are unique. You are an original and it's time for the real you to come forth. There was that TV game that they would play and they'd have different people dress up like a celebrity who looked a little bit like that celebrity. And so let's say it was Oprah and they had three people dressed up like her, looking like her. Now all three couldn't be her, right? And they would say, well, uh, two, two were not her. And they would say, will the real Oprah come forth? And the first imitation will step out and it's like, oh no, that's not Oprah. The second imitation will step out like, oh no, that's not Oprah. But then they'd say, let the real Oprah and the real person will now come forth. I say, let the real Sandra, let the real Helen, let the real Magdalene, come on, come on, put your name there. Let the real Barkley, come on, let the real person, the real Jenny come for today come out come out come out Saul in a uh, first Samuel 10 was called by God to be the first king of Israel when Israel said we needed a king God said to Samuel anoint Saul son of Kish he's going to be the king when they were ready to crown Saul go to the text when you can first Samuel 10 the Bible says the people asked and Samuel inquired of God, we are here for coronation. We are here to crown the first king, but we can't find him. Mm. They couldn't find Saul and they said, God, is he here? God said, yes, he's here, but he's hidden beneath the baggage. Ooh. He is hidden beneath the baggage. Saul is at his coronation. Hear me. He's at the day of his ascension. Hear me. He was in the moment of elevation. Hear me. His time had come, but his he was not ready nor prepared mentally, emotionally, because he was now hidden beneath the rubble, the baggage, the stuff. I don't know. But I sense somebody watching this broadcast, your time has come. It's now.
Your moment is now. Your moment for elevation, your moment for acceleration, your moment for advancement is now. Ooh, your Kairos moment is now, but stuff from your past, stuff that you haven't resolved, stuff that you haven't released, stuff that you have not repented of, stuff that you have not forgiven others of, stuff that you have not dropped, they are hindering you from soaring. Today is the day of your coronation. You're going to need to, and I'm going to need to, come out from the rubble. Come out from the abuse, man. Come out, come out. Come out from the trauma. Come out. Come out from the disappointment. Come out. Come out from the shame. Come out. Come out from the betrayal. Come out. Come out from the offense. Come out. I say to you, child of God, come out. Come out. Come forth. For your time has come, your time is now, and God wants to put his hand and his finger on those things that have hijacked, aborted, sabotaged your movement. No longer, no more. Be an original, not a copy man. Don't walk anymore in defeat. Don't walk anymore in insecurity, in fear, and in denial. Don't walk anymore second-guessing yourself and, and wondering, should I, could I, am I, you are enough. Somebody say, I am enough. And by the way, let me encourage my viewers to do this assignment I gave to my, my congregation yesterday, Kingdom Life Center. I said this week, as soon as you can this week, spend some time with a pen and a paper and begin to write some I am's because you need to reverse some things in your brain. You need to reverse some things in your thinking. You need to shift your paradigm. You need to see yourself as God sees you. Ay, 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 ay. You need to be restored into the image of God, the Imago Dei. Hallelujah. You need to say, I am whole. I am healed. I am forgiven. I am worthy. I am enough. I am prosperous. I am wealthy. I am an entrepreneur. I have the, the means to advance. I, come on, somebody. Oh my God. I am divinely connected. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I am resourced and I am a resource. Come on, somebody. Come on. Put some I ams in that comment section. Come on, put some I am's on this, on this chat today. Declare it openly. Let it get into the atmosphere. Let what you speak begin to shift how you see yourself. Good God Almighty. You are an original. Don't you die a carbon copy. Are you hearing me? Albert Einstein says every one, everybody is a genius. That means everybody has exceptional capacity, exceptional ability. Everybody can preach, but ain't nobody preach like Sandra Valentine. Everybody could, could, could teach, but not every, everybody can teach like me. You see, you, however you do what you do, it's uniquely done. And I want to do it the best I can. Come on, somebody. Everybody is maybe could draw, but nobody draws like you. Everybody could sing, but nobody could sing like you. You got to understand the uniqueness of your ability. Everybody is a genius, he says. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it is stupid. Our educational system has done an injustice. You put 30 students in a classroom and everybody has to learn the same way. I was a teacher, I know what I'm talking about. And I had students who just could not get it. You taught the same thing over and over. You, revi you had revision and I mean, you even gave special attention and they just couldn't get it. Outside of a learning disability, the truth be told, some people not going to get the information through the conventional, conventional methods and the conventional means. Some people, listen, parents, hear me, parents. Some children are not going to bring home A's. But don't you compare your child who's a C student who's doing the very best he or she can with that A student. Because that C student 
may have more ambition, may have more intuition, may have more common sense and more ability to do some things later on in life. I can think right now as I'm speaking of people in my world, in my sphere, who has no educational background, but they're doing so much better than most because there is something else that they have that they stuck to, that they gave themselves to, and it's pushed them further and farther than their peers. Are you hearing me? So don't ask a fish to climb a tree. Let the fish stay in the pond. Let the fish stay in the lake. Let the fish stay in the river. Let the fish stay in water, in its element. Oh God, I hear you, Holy Spirit. God says to tell you, get in your element. Woo! Get in your element. Get in your element. The fish's element is the water. And when you put a fish in the water, it knows how to navigate itself in there because it's in its element. You take a fish out of water, sooner or later that fish dies. Sooner or later it loses its breath. Oh my God, if you're losing your breath, if you're losing your steam, if you're losing your passion, if you're losing your drive, if there's no impetus to move and to do anything, maybe, maybe, just maybe you are out of your element. Listen, your design speaks to your destiny, to your purpose. And God has carefully crafted you and made you to do something or some things specific. And when you discover what those are, because you are tapping into your passion and how you're wired, what moves you, what keeps you awake, what you constantly think about, what constantly provokes you and stirs you. My God, when you start observing how you're wired, <laughs> you will get connected with the creator's intent. He has a specific intention towards you, beloved. Are you hearing me? Everything was made with the purpose of pointing our hearts and our minds back to our creator. That is the whole reason you exist, that you would come back to God, you would connect back to God, and he will then direct you. Yesterday, I was reflecting on that scripture that says, my steps are ordered. And I was so glad to be alone because I shouted in my kitchen because even though I'm familiar with it, it was just a wonderful reminder that my steps are ordered. Where I am today, where I am today, because I'm living in obedience, because I'm submitted to God, because I, I am intentionally seeking God's will for my life. I am in the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. I am in the perfect will of God. Beloved, you got to believe that. That if you are walking in submission, if you are walking in a surrendered manner to the Lord and you are purposefully pursuing his will and you're saying every single moment of every single day, yes, Lord, yes, you are in God's perfect will. Do not question that. Hallelujah. So know that God is ordering your steps, has ordered your steps, and every step you take and every move you make mm -hmm, in obedience, in surrender, in submission, is getting you closer and closer and closer and closer to the fullness of God's purpose for your life. Wow. I know what I'm talking about. Because listen, this girl, well, lady, <laughs> But let me tell you, this, 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 this young woman from Antigua, I, when I look at the journey that I've had with the Lord, gave my life to the Lord at 14. By, by, by age 18, I knew God had called me to full-time ministry. And, and by 19, I was in the West Indies School of Theology in Trinidad. And guess what? When I went to Bible school, Bible college at the age of 18, I was convinced that I was going to minister to children and children only. <laughs> that was my assignment and my calling full stop. 
I would tell you I am not called to be a pastor. I'll never be a pastor. That's a joke because I'm going, I'm into my 25th year of pastoral ministry. So, hey, but don't tell God what you won't do because remember, he is the one who designed you. The reason I'm telling you a little bit of that story is to say to you that every single day as you move, as you advance, you're walking into more and more of God's purpose for your life. I'm telling you because 30, what, 36 years later, I am doing things that I could have never imagined. 36 years after my graduation from Western New School of Theology in Trinidad, the Pentecostal Bible College, I am doing things that never were in my mind. What is that saying? Stay connected to God. Stay attentive to his voice. Stay attentive to his leading. Because guess what? His purpose for your life will never change, but his leading will. So his purpose was always for me to minister his, his word to his people. His purpose for me was always for me to be a minister of the gospel. His purpose for me has always been for me to deliver and teach his word, to minister to the lives of his people, always. However, over the years, that has looked differently at different times. I have done Christian education ministry. I have done youth ministry. Come on. I have been a de departmental head and director. I have served on all kinds of boards. Come on. I have been a board member. I have been, oh my gosh, so many things that were stepping stones to where I am today. Stay connected. Stay attentive. Stay attuned. Don't despise any place you are. If you're in obedience and submission, God will use where you are to get you where, to where you need to go. Let me try that again as we wrap up. God will use where you are to get you to where you need to go. He wastes nothing and he will collect the fragments of your life, Eve life, even those things you want to forget want to discard those pages of the book that you want to rip out and throw away. No, no, no. Wait, God is a God of redemption. God is a restorer and he will collect those pieces. My God, the broken pieces, and he will create something beautiful out of your ashes. Give them to him. Give what is insignificant to you to him. Give him your five loaves, two fishes. Give him the little bit of oil you have left. Give him the little bit of talent you think that doesn't mean much. Give him what you can. Give him your time. Give him your talent. Give him your treasure. And watch his breath. Go upon it and watch his multiplication effect. Whoo, you're destined for greatness. Somebody hashtag, come on. I am destined for greatness. Hallelujah. My moment has come. My time is now. I am destined for greatness. Mm. My friends, as we wrap up today, <laughs> I want to encourage you to spend some time alone, praying and writing, journaling. As you consider what God is, has been saying to you, not just here, but you know, throughout your life, those, those, those things that has been nagging at your soul, listen, attend, pause, and pay attention so you can walk in purpose and in destiny. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that before time began, you chose us. Father, we thank you that before we were thought of, maybe we weren't even thought of by our parents, before our conception, we were in the mind of God. Lord, thank you that we are not a mistake. I am not a mistake. Oh my God. You know the term illegitimate child? In God's mind, I am a child of destiny, not an illegitimate child. I am destined. He wanted me here or my mother would not have been able to take me to full term. He wanted me here or 
some childhood sickness would have taken me out. He wanted me here. Or when my brother thought he was giving me medicine and gave me turpentine, oh, I would have died. He wanted me here or when uh, uh, that truck, when I was in Jamaica years ago and, and the driver of the vehicle got into traffic unknowingly, we could have been killed. But God said, no, your time had not come. In 2011, when my car was stuck on the train tracks down the road, I would have died had God said your time had not yet come. You are breathing. You are here because God says there is yet a purpose for your presence in the earth. You are breathing, my beloved. God says because there's yet a purpose for your presence in the earth. I declare that you will know it, that you will know it, that you will discover what it is and that you will walk fully in it. Come alive to God, come alive to his purpose. Come alive to God, come alive to his purpose. Come alive to his voice. Come alive to his leading. Come alive to his pronouncement. Come alive to his prophetic release over your life. Break the curse of whatever has been said over you. We break it today and we call forth the purpose of God over your life. Hallelujah. You have been living beneath your potential, but today I say, get up, come up, arise and shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Glory to God. Isaiah 60 and one, your light has come. Your moment of glorifying God is now. Your moment to shine for the kingdom of God is now. You are in your season of fullness, of overflow, of prosperity. And I say to you, walk in it. Amen? Walk in it. So beloved, I trust this has been a blessing to you. And if it has, go ahead, let me know. Go ahead as we close. Touch the like button. Touch the thumbs button if this has blessed your life. And I encourage you, please, please don't go without liking the video and sharing the video and telling your friends that they too can walk in the original design of God for their lives. That they too can walk fully in God's intention towards them. And he desires to perfect in each of us that which concerns us. I close with Psalm 57 and two. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. Psalm 57 and two. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. Beloved, pray, press into prayer, press into his presence. He will unveil, he will unfold, he will make known to you what his original intent is for your life. Listen, I do upload these videos on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Sanja Valentine Ministries. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and share the videos from past broadcast from that space. All right. Love each of you. Good to see you here. I'll connect with you next time. Bye-bye.